A very happy Diwali to all the viewers of 3 Dodo TV. I am Manoj Dara. For cryptocurrencies, the year 2023 is turning into a huge success with crypto market cap accumulating up to 55% led by the Bitcoin's rally. The largest cryptocurrency by market cap has set the market on fire. Starting Diwali celebrations pretty early and probably setting a tone for a Santa Claus rally. As we in India start celebrating the festival of lights, the crypto markets seem to have received Goddess Lakshmi's blessing. Bitcoin has hit fresh 18-month highs, carrying forward the momentum from a recent rally. Giving us his views on the crypto market and the future prospects, we have invited our guest, Mr. Raj Kapoor. Let's hear from him. Hi, Manoj. Thanks for having me here. But first, let me begin by wishing you and all my viewers at 3.0 TV a fantastic Happy Diwali. This Diwali is different. Last year, we had the crypto winter. This year, things promised to be a little different. But that optimism has a reason. What's the reasons? First, the increasing optimism around the possible approval of the spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, ETF products, by the SEC USA. That's one big point. Actually, there is a fantastic eight-day window between November 9th and the 17th, where all the 12 Bitcoin ETFs could be possibly approved by the SEC. Now, that was done by an assessment by Bloomberg some time back in an analysis. Let's see what happens. But I think that's good news for all. Further, nothing is guaranteed with the SEC. We all know that. But it looks like November could go down as the watershed mark month for the institutional crypto adoption. Obviously, this is a great thing from an adoption perspective and for crypto to go a little more mainstream than it has now. It'll also be a very significant milestone as ETFs have a very crucial role in making crypto investments accessible to a wider range of investors. And that, I think, is really important, especially for financial advisors who will lead to this. And this will lead to basically mass adoption anyways. That's what we all want. Well, there's another reason I would think so. Bullish sentiments on side, yes, but there are reasons for bullish sentiments. Most of the digital assets have gone uh, with Bitcoin. Bitcoin obviously has gone up, but others as well. And the total crypto market cap is now around $1.4 trillion. That's a lot, considering we've had terrible times in the last few months or years. With the next Bitcoin halving coming up in the next five months, wow, the whole Bitcoin community and the crypto community is waiting for that. All long-term BTC holders, they just decided, we'll hold it. They are really bullish. They're not letting go of their assets, especially the miners who've had a fantastic last few years, last three uh, quarter earnings. They have had a good earning, and that's another positive sign, I think. If you also look at the macro level, a lot of data points indicate that the FED may pose rate hikes, which may think of cutting down rates as early as Jan 2024. Uh, this has got to fuel the traditional market and cryptocurrencies even higher. And that, I think, is a reason for everyone to be bullish. So this Diwali, let's hope we have the new and next bull run. Till then, Raj Kapoor signing off from here and wishing all of you once again, all our 3.0 viewers and Manoj and your team, a very, very happy Diwali. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for an interesting insight into the crypto markets. Now joining with me is my troop of women anchors, and I'm wishing them a very happy Diwali. Recently, we have seen daily NFT trading volumes reaching a three-month high, which was at $20 million. The boost in the trading volumes reversed a year-long decline in October, which has increased 32% over the previous month. My colleague Ruchi Sharma joins us to shed light on the recent happenings in the world of NFTs. Ruchi, over to you. Thank you, Manoj. Diwali is a festival of joy and is an opportune time to showcase your artwork in the real world. Talking about the virtual world, the Web3 space, NFT market is a perfect platform to place your digital collectibles on a display. Interestingly, sales of digital collectibles are surging after many months of decline. According to the blockchain analytics company Nansen AI report, during the last five weeks, the NFT ecosystem has experienced a notable surge in sales volume. 
Nansen noted that NFT sales for the week ended October 9th were at 29,704 ETH or almost $56 million at the current ETH market rate in a post on X. Weekly sales volume growth brought the total to 68,342 ETH or more than $129 million. Over the past 30 days, Blur, an NFT marketplace, has recorded the largest share of NFT trade volume. The data aggregator NFT Go reports that in the preceding 30 days, Blur's trading volume was 161,433 ETH or almost $305 million. Blur rival OpenSea secured the second position with a trading volume of 52,307 ETH or almost $100 million. Overall, NFT market is doing good, right? Uh, hmm. I categorize them into two different sections. One is the PFP or the JPEG NFTs and the other is the real world asset NFTs. Right. Uh, the PFP JPEG NFTs, if you know, you know, there are like the large players largely driven by Yuga Labs and CryptoPunks and uh, Penguins and so on. So uh, these top projects have actually built an ecosystem around the NFT. But all the follow-on projects that have come across trying to build a community have not been able to do that because most of the people who participated in it were not for the community value of it. They were more for the financial and the speculative value of it. Mm -hmm. So if today there is an NFT which gives a good return, they just jump to and to one to the other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so from a forecast perspective, I would say that uh, the uh, JPEG NFT industry the top few players will continue to exist, uh, okay. but I do not see any new players coming into this particular space. But we're going to see a new angle to this, right? We're going to see real world businesses. So mm. the likes of, you know, Starbucks and all these players are, are, you know, it could be a gaming community. It could be a sporting club. So right. those kind of NFTs are going to see much more adoption rather than the JPEG NFTs alone, which are only art driven, uh, trying to build a community around it. So we're going to see community moving to NFT rather than NFTs moving towards communities. Now, I don't think uh, it is a play around uh, sales or market share, etc. Mm -hmm. It is largely a play around uh, overall dampening of how the PFP, JPEG, NFT markets have been playing. Right. So because there is no trading happening, uh, they they try to remove the royalty and try to make sure that con volume continues to exist. But okay. there is only so much that you can support a falling market. And uh, that market is, like I said, is going to continue to go down. There are going to be newer avenues, newer markets which open up around PFP and NFTs, which are access driven. Uh, but the current uh, OpenSea model is not going to thrive. In fact, just to kind of give a heads up, you know, we ourselves are in a real world kind of a business. And we were talking to one of the top three NFT marketplaces globally just yesterday, and they themselves are looking to move away or at least try to create newer business models around real world asset NFTs rather than continue to only focus on PFP yes. NFTs. Uh, like I said, you know, the market is going to get into split into half. One is going to be access driven. The other one is going to be real world asset driven and uh, real world asset driven is going to get the maximum amount of uh, uh, attention from uh, larger market players, conventional markets as well. Right. So that's going to be like BCG expected, uh, predicted, it's going to be like a multi-trillion dollar industry very soon. Let's go to my colleague Vishaka Thakur to get an update on Metaverse. Thanks, Ruchi, for giving us a sneak peek into the NFT market. We are celebrating the biggest festival in the country, the Dipavali in real world. We have witnessed Diwali being celebrated in the virtual world too. Metaverse will open up new horizons for brands, businesses and the community as a whole. Metaverse initiatives received $707 million in venture capital funding in the first half of 2023, accounting for 44% of all Web3 investments as per a report by Daproda. And now, Metaverse gaming tokens of Gala Games, Axie Infinity, Sandbox and Decentraland have experienced a significant growth recently with prices gaining as much as 16%. I spoke with various industry experts to understand what is going on in the metaverse sector and they have provided valuable insights on the rising investor interest in these tokens as well as some key trends in the Web3 space. The token, I mean the reason why most of the uh, like Gala games if you're, you're talking about. So what happened here is uh, in the last three to four months, gamification has improved a lot in the sense that gaming industry has literally taken up automatically. Yes. And, and that also because the leaders have come up. And if you look at Sony's and others, they also are now betting on tokens. I mean, that's that's why 
these startups uh, with these small startups with tokens have really come up well so because of which what happened is he all of us in the gaming industry the uh, the, the gamification of earn of uh, earn while you play i mean that's that's the that's the way uh, to say it literally took the customer uh, into picture and now what happened is because you, you can now earn while you play and that market has come up well and that's the reason why you see a lot a lot of token on token based games have come up and to play the token token game token based game you need to have a experiential metaverse system and that's how everything come up. last component was which people thought is the enemy of metaverse but it was the ai and but it actually it is not the enemy it actually augmented the metaverse to the next level See, I think uh, if you look at it from a financial perspective, uh, what crypto has done is basically, especially the metaverse and the Web3 tokens, and especially when we're talking about metaverse tokens, which essentially also provide not just a crypto sort of an area, but also sort of a legitimacy in terms of being backed and used by actual contents and actual experiences. So what it has done is basically it has sort of taken that place, which essentially typically was previously being used by gold. so the moment you have a lot of some of these instabilities in the financial markets especially around dollar and those sort of areas typically your investments into gold and crypto sort of go up and i think basically over period of time especially around with a lot of uncertainties in terms of the i mean things which are happening either in middle east or in europe basically a, a lot of uh, investment interest and then investor interest will essentially sort of move into crypto and those sort of areas so i do see a very positive outlook and as i said basically the crypto now versus the crypto and nft market uh, which was earlier basically now the market is pretty much more sensible and not just sensible basically people want to see up values and i think that's where a lot of these mode metaverse tokens essentially prevail sort of present up a value to the customer metaverse is the battlefield and in the battlefield you have few players like ai gaming and nft so ai helps and integrates a faster user base experience for metaverse gaming is a, a core product of a metaverse and if you talk about nfts we have seen it has been shaded down but now investments coming in ai coming in gaming and nft is picking up so all these three elements will come directly to the metaverse only and you will definitely see big coins of metaverse with high market value like sand mana axs alice arndia this all will play a vital role and i am not surprised at all if you see the scenarios As the experts rightly mentioned, the gaming industry is the center of metaverse, and according to a report by Valuates, gaming-led global metaverse market can reach twenty-eight billion dollars by twenty twenty-eight. So let's see what Shikha has to say about the gaming industry. Thank you, Vishakha, for your in-depth analysis on the metaverse sector. In good old days, about a decade ago. The Valley used to offer an opportunity for family to unite and have a gala of time, celebrate festivity, enjoy food, boss, crackers, and play games, mostly in-house games such as Ludo, card games. Now, scenarios have changed. So is the gaming activity. Players can experience immersive virtual worlds through virtual reality and artificial intelligence. This compelling game experience is set to continue in the near future as industry leaders discuss the future of virtual worlds. The video game industry is projected to witness astounding revenue growth, reaching an estimated $533 billion by 2027. It has the potential to a dominant entertainment sector. As per Dapreda's Quarter 3 report, the Web3 gaming projects raised $600 million, bringing the year's total investment to $2.3 billion. This is 30% of the funds raised in the previous year, but the market dynamics of 2023 are unique. The blockchain gaming sector recorded $739 million in investments in quarter three, while the second quarter saw $973 million. Venture capital firms have also invested significantly in the space, indicating their confidence in the future of blockchain gaming. The figure has dropped by approximately 50% since quarter three, 2022. when the space attracted investments worth 1.2 billion dollars despite regulatory heat the gaming sector has dominated the decentralized applications market the trend highlights need for adaptability and foresight in this ever evolving domain 
Furthermore, the excitement surrounding a potential spot Bitcoin ETF is not only increasing Bitcoin's price, but also resurgence of interest in blockchain games, according to Yatsu, founder of Animoca Brands. Let us listen in from our guests what they have to tell us about the overall Web3 gaming space. See, adoption, it's uh, hard to predict like which games would be the one that would be making the headlines, would mm. be making, uh, you know, getting the uh, the first billion users right. or even hundred of uh, million of users. But yes, the couple of elements that would uh, play the major role would be first of uh, first of all would be the gameplay, mm. because to have masses, uh, the masses do not care so much about making some money uh, from the games, but rather unless it's a betting game, of course. But uh, yeah, they want a good game. They want a good, uh, uh, like they want good gameplay. They want good mechanics, good mm -hmm. aesthetics. So mm -hmm. basically a good game uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, smooth interactions. So rather than switching from one application to another, if everything is seamless. And uh, I think, you know, right now, the best way for Web3 gaming is, is to not let the user know that it is Web3 gaming. So this abstraction, this uh, abstraction would be uh, really helpful mm -hmm. as well as identity. So Web3 Gaming, how it differs a lot from Web2 Gaming is mm -hmm. that here people are, uh, you know, generating, first of all, the strongest point is creation of ownership of right. assets. And that also leads to uh, having a strong identity of the player in into the ecosystem, building communities, building ecosystems building identity and linking them all with uh, GameFi elements. Mm -hmm. So whoever does the uh, the right balance of these all elements these is uh, bound to grow, bound to excel. And we are, uh, yeah, there are some exciting news recently. Some good companies are coming who are, who are already even, even in this beer market, they've raised uh, big funds uh, mm -hmm. as well as they're working on some amazing models. So yeah, I'm, I'm expecting for some exciting times ahead. While Web3 is a global paradigm, I would say we would expect most of the growth to come in places like Asia and possibly also Middle East. Uh, the reason why is not just because people in Asia as a percentage are more gamers, but it's also that the regulatory framework in those countries is much more friendly. So for instance, if you look at Hong Kong, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia, or even here in Dubai, actually you can see that, um, you know, regulatory wise and government wise, they're very forward. And as a result, people are much more comfortable and they're excited about those possibilities. Whereas in places like the US for the time being are struggling with that, not because they're industry people who really want to push it forward, but because there's regulatory unclarity, because there is certain kind of fear and doubt what's going on. And of course, you know, the recent events haven't been helpful as, uh, at all. So that's one of the reasons why I think Asia will lead. And by the way, that's what happened with free-to-play gaming. Free-to-play gaming was led by Asia first before it started taking over the rest of the world. Well, first of all, I think there are many things that make India a very good market, um, especially when you think also some of the most successful early crypto founders have actually come from the Indian Peninsula. So, and we work very closely with some of them, like for instance, like Polygon and those guys, so those are the great team. Uh, but I would say that one of the differences about India versus other parts of Asia is that the regulatory framework isn't completely clear yet. Um, how, and, and I think that's holding it back. And I do believe that if the Indian government actually starts to embrace this opportunity, because one of the things that Web3 is really powerful is to actually bring people from the bottom up. And in fact, from a market standpoint, I would say, that uh, India is a perfect market. If you think about what crypto has done for Southeast Asia, or crypto has the potential to do in the MENA region, I would actually think India would have the same potential. Let's hear it from my colleague Roshni Shingre on the transformative potential of blockchain. Thank you, Shikha. After an interesting update from gaming sectors, let's do a quick check on technology, which is bedrock of the Web3 space. Yes, you guessed it right. I'm talking about blockchain technology. The SPO has witnessed a surge in interest and adopted in India. From finance to healthcare to spacecraft, Virtually every industry is influenced by blockchain's potential, be it enhancing transparency, security, efficiency, etc. The growing use cases in instrumental to grabbing attention of user segment cutting across the sector. Not just industry players, many public and private sectors, institutions, state governments are exploring the use cases of blockchain solutions. The Reserve Bank of India is encouraging blockchain adoption in payment systems and guiding banks to develop blockchain application through its regulatory sandbox initiative. Similarly, many states in the country are adopting use of blockchain-based land record system to minimize property fraud and errors. 
the global blockchain technology market size was estimated at 4.8 billion dollar in 2022 and is expected to reach 2.33 trillion dollar by 2032 at an astronomical compound annual growth rate of 85.7 percent during the forecast period that is 2023 to 2032. The global blockchain market is segmented into payments, exchanges, smart contracts, documentation, digital identity, governance, risk and compliance, and other in terms of application segment. The other segments include digital voting, ride sharing, advertising, and many others. Blockchain helps reduce cost, increases security and transparency, and decreases transaction time while reducing the need for a trusted third party. Blockchain handles a varying set of rules and configurations. Applications such as smart contracts can greatly improve process efficiency, reliability and transparency and reduce risk. The prospective uses of blockchain are varied and wide, and the technology is becoming more prevailing. Blockchain has strengthened the BFSI industry globally, and it can enhance the infrastructure to deal with issues more efficiently. The emerging technology like blockchain it's like a decentralized application is tremendously rapidly growing so that you know not only in the field of uh, uh, what i can say is only just like an, as a uh, reality sector or a retail sector or a pharma sector it's been gone to everywhere even now the governments of almost all the countries are adopting blockchain technologies so that you know in terms of non-hacking activity and also more transparency for giving to the customers, a lot of governments are also approaching the blockchain technologies now for a better usement and as a better use. Uh, doing a transaction in the form of a crypto has become very easy so that, you know, the transactions of a million, they can do it in a single, what you call it, in minutes of a time with a more better security and having a lot of confidentiality rather than carrying of the fiat currency. So real estate is also one sector which is adopting the blockchain day by day. And uh, coming to the latest trend in the real estate, earlier like people used to buy a property like, you know, with the USDT and the Bitcoin. Now, a little uphand, like, you know, a kind of a little development, the tokenization, that means the fractioning of a real estate property is also coming into the place where a single person used to buy a property in the world until now. Now, a group of people, maybe a thousand, maybe a, uh, like multiple of thousands of people can invest on a single property. So that's where the fractionization of the real asset has come into the picture. So even that level of advancement has come into the real estate uh, sector. Technologies like blockchain, which would provide uh, authenticity, ownership, uh, on, backed by a digital public record, that is going to help. So what is going to happen at one end as generative AI grows, that technology adoption like blockchain also grows. Wow, interesting stuff in the Web3 space. I take this opportunity to thank all my guests for providing their valuable insights and enlightening us. Last but not the least, I also thank my colleagues and wish them a very happy Deepavali and a prosperous new year. Thank you everyone.